Welcome everyone to Horizon Lodge's celebration of the winter solstice. For the next hour, we are going to be streaming this earth altar. Um, I will be coming in and out with uh, a series of uh, earth-related readings, so uh, please stay tuned for those. And um, at 8 o'clock, we will be starting the invocation proper of the universe card and or the spirit of Saturn and Earth. So until then, please enjoy this live stream.
Okay, so I've got the first reading ready here. Um, this is going to be from Crowley's Orpheus, and it is from the first part of Orpheus, where Orpheus is calling to all of the elemental spirits uh, of the earth. Um, he starts with fire and uh, moves on to air and water. And those I re we read uh, those during the the other quarter rituals. And so now he's finally done with all of those, and uh, at last he's going to be invoking the spirits of the earth to help him in his journey. <clears throat> One other is left me, the light of the earth. If fate had bereft me, O muse of thy birth, still I had cleft me away in her girth. I tune the loud lyre once again to the mother of men in her mirth. O mighty and glad in springtime and summer, O tearful and sad when the sun is grown dumber. When the season is mad, and the gods overcome her, When the sky is fulfilled of the frost, and the fingers of winter numb her, O marvellous earth of multiple mood, that givest men birth and delicate food, Red wine to make mirth of thine own red blood, and corn and green grass, And sweet flowers and fruits most heavenly hued. Born skyward in swoon by arrowy hours, Girt round of the moon and the girdling flowers, The sun for a boon, sweet kisses of showers. O mother, O life, O desire, My soul is a bird in thy bowers, My soul is caught up in thy green-hearted waves, I drink at the cup of thy sweet valley graves. My spirit may sup slow tunes in thy caves. O oh, hide me, thy child, in thy bosom, that the heart of me yearns to and craves, most virginally sprung in the shadow of light, eternally young, a magical sight, wandering among day, twilight, and night as a bride in her chamber that dreams many visions of varied delight. O oh, how shall my lyre divide thee, dispart thy water and fire, thy soul and thy heart, thy hills that spring higher, thy flowers that upstart. How choir these, my limitless love, with a lewd and limited art, a fortress, a sphere, an arrow of flame, let thy children appear at the sound of thy name. In my silence uprear the, thy, the sweet guardian of shame. Be they choral to him thee, O mother, that magic ineffable fame. Last birth of the sun, best gift of the giver, thou surely art one. As the moon on the river whose star blossoms run, Kiss, tremble, and shiver, and roll into ultimate space, And are lost to man's vision forever. Come forth to the sound of the lightning lyre, Ye valleys profound as a man's desire, Ye woodlands bound in the hills that are higher Than even the note of a bird as it wings to the solar fire. Ye fruits and corn, gold, rose, and green, Vines purple-born, pearl-hidden sheen, Trees waving in scorn of the grass between, Come forth in your chorus, and chant the praise Of your mother and queen, ye trees many-fronded, That shake to the wind, green leaves that have Sounded my harp to your kind, Light boughs that are rounded, Gray tops that are shrined In the tears of the heaven As they fall in the blackening storm, Grown blind. Ye fields that are flowered, 
in purple and white, embossed and embowered by the love of the light, gold-sandaled and showered dew-kissed of the night, your song is too faint and too joyous for mortals to hear it aright. Blue pansies and roses and poppies of red, pale violets in posies where hyacinth bled, the flower that closes its dolorous head, what song may be sung, or what tune may be told, or what word may be said? All tropical scent, blossom kindled perfume, love colors new rent by the infinite womb, gold subtly bent with the scarlet bloom. Shall ye in my melody live? Shall my song be not rather your tomb? Most mu most musical moves the head of the corn. Strong glorious loves of its being are born. Dim shadows of groves of Demeter adorn the waves and the woods of the earth. The heart of the mother forlorn. Caves curved of the wind. Deep hollows of earth, whence the song of the blind old prophet had birth. The caves that confined deep music of mirth. Thy caves, O my mother, are these not a gem in thy virginal girth? Ye mountains uplift as an arrow in air, ice-crowned, rock-cliffed, snow-bosomed bare. I give ye the gift of a voice more fair. Leave echo and wake, and proclaim that ye stand against death and despair. Ye hills where I rested in rapture of life, from dawn calm-breasted to evening strife, where skies were nested with mist for a wife. Leave echo and speak for yourselves. Let your song pierce the heaven as a knife. Olympus alone of earth's glories is taken for deity's throne, deep frozen, storm shaken. What glories are shown when their slumbers awaken? The avalanche thunders adown, and the gods of the gods are forsaken. To mortals your voices are mighty and glad. The maiden rejoices, the man is grown mad for love. And his choice is the choice of a lad when a virgin first smiles on his suit, and the summer for envy is sad. Wayne grows Aphrodite, and Artemis frail, Apollo less mighty, red Bacchus too pale. Dark Hades grows bright, he alone may avail when the god and the mortal are one, as the mountain is one with the gale. And the children of earth answer. Our hair, deep laden with the scent of earth, the color of her rosy body's birth, our mother, lady, and life of all that is divine, we gather to the somber sound, as spring had whispered, follow, hiding in her wing, her glorious head and flowing breast of wine, though in the heart, though in the hollow of her heart, be set so deep and awful a fire, though the net of all her robes be frail, as we are fine, we gather, listening, to the living lyre, like falling water shot with amber fire, and blown aloft by winds even to heaven's desire. Deep starry gems set in a silver sea, sullen low voices of dark minstrelly, light whispers of strange loves, of silver woven, dumb kisses and wild laughter following, all these as lives of autumn and spring. We are 
we follow across the rainbow cloven, a never-fading path of golden glory, whereof the lone Lucidian promontory holds one divinest gate, and the other troven far, far beyond interlunar skies, where the Himalayas stir them, and arise to listen to the song that swells our arteries. O moving labyrinth, sun-crowned, dread maze of starry paths, of Zeus' untrodden ways, of mystic veils unfooted of the deep, our mother, virgin yet in many places, unseen of man, beholden of the faces only of elemental shapes of sleep that are ourselves, her daughters, wild and fair, caught nymphwise in the kisses of the air, that flings our songs reverberate from steep to steep, songs caught in solar light. We are shed, even down beyond the valleys of the dead, and smiled upon in groves ruled by the holy head. Great Pan hath heard us, Children of his wooing, great Pan that listens to the forest, suing vainly his peace that dwells even in the desolate halls. The delicately chiseled flowers nod, look to the skies, and see thee for a god, O sightless lyre that wails, O viewless voice that calls. Thy sound is in our death. And in her womb, far in the spring's milky breast, in autumn's gloom, in summer's feast and song, in winter's funerals, in the dead hollow of the hills, there rings sharp song like frost hissing on silver wings, or like the swelling tune we listen to for springs. We come, we mountains, Crowned and incense bringing, robed as white priests, the solemn anthem singing, or as an organ thundering fiery tunes. We come, we greener hills, and rend the sky with happier chorus, and the songs that die or mix their subtle joy and being with the moons. We come. We pine-clad steeps, we feathery slopes, with footfalls softer than the antelopes. We listen and obey the sacred slumber of swoons, more tranced than death in this far following, careless of winter, not invoking spring. And all the witless woods company us and sing, but not the glades by song of the unstricken, not they? Shall they refuse the pulse to quicken, soft smiting the low melody of light? Tuned without fingers, the wild woods lift high the wordless chant, the murmurous melody, the song that dwells like moon in kindled night. We draw from low palm groves and cedar hills, from stern gray slumbers, for thy music fills all earth with unimaginable delight. Have we not brought the leaves do diamond it? The buds, fresh gleaming, star blossoms, and shed our scent and color and song around thy sacred head? We, that our flowers, are kindled in thy praise, even as thy song shed luster and soft rays, darting to brighten and open the folded flowers. The violet lifts its head, the lily lightens, the daisy shakes its dew, the pansy brightens, all cups of molten light upon the twilight hours. The poppy flames anew, the buttercup gl glows with fresh fire, the larkspur rouses up, to be the lark indeed amid the azalea bowers, magnolia and light blossoms of roses mute, rouse them together in one golden lute in fairy light 
and song into the sky to shoot. The laughing companies of corn awaken, their wind-swept waves by daedal music taken into a golden heaven of festal song. We shake and glisten in the sun. We see the very soul and majesty of thee thrill in the lyre and leave the lazy long notes for crisp music of sharp rustling sound, and thy life quickens, and thy loves abound, listening the answer of our dancing throng. Joy, sleep, peace, laughter, thought, remembrance, came even at our prelude, a death-quickening flame, and earth rejoiced throughout to hear Demeter's name. We come, in base, deep swelling, rocks and caves, a hollow roar across the golden waves, hidden in islands set deep in the untraveled sea, across the corn from storm-cleft mountainsides, our voice peals like the thunder of the tides into the darkling hills that fringe eternity. Dire and divine, our womb, unfruitful, bears deep music darker than tempestuous airs when heaven's anger wakes, when at our own decree, with clanging rocks, sky piercing for our tomb, we call the thunder from our own black womb, we hear the voice, and we obey, we know not whom, we hear thee, who are cliffs, and pinnacles higher than heaven's base, founded far in hells. We hear that sunder the blue skies of heaven. Our voiceless clefts and spires of delicate hue, changing and lost in the exultant blue, by fire and whirlwind fashioned, and then riven, invoke fresh song with deep solemnity in noble notes of mastery answering thee, by some young tumult in our old hearts driven. And this immortal path of splintered rock shall lead the wild chant to the sky, and mock the nectared feast of gods with its impassioned shock. Deep-mouthed, I, earthquake, wake in echoing thunder, I break my mother's breast, I tear asunder the womb that bore me, I rise in terror, threatening to ruin her, crag, crown, and column, reverberate music of that mighty and solemn call of creation, Vulcan's awful mirror, I rend the sky with clamor terrible, Shaking the thrones of earth and heaven and hell, Confound the universe in universal error, I sound the awful note that summons mortals, As I awake to pass the dreadful portals, And face the gloom of Dis, the unnameable mortals. Soft, our mild music steals through thunderous pauses, Pause, made magic by the second causes, the mighty ones that dwell beneath the Empyrean. We, vines and fruits and trees, with autumn laden, sing as the bride song of a married maiden before the godlike vigor of the man breaks the frail temple doors of love asunder and wakes the new life's promise. In pale wonder, shattering the molded glass, the shape of selenium, fruits of the earth, our low song joins the crowd. We need not to be heard to thunder loud. Our hearts are lifted up, our heads with love low bowed. The tenderest light, the deepest hidden, is shed up through the earth. Your home, happy dead. Crusted in darkness lie the secret lights, Formed in the agony of earth as tears, Clothed in the crystal mirror 
of the years, we dwell, sweet-hearted nuns, sweet-hearted nun like emerites, diamond and ruby, topaz and sapphire, emerald and amethyst, one clear bright fire, we are earth stars below, as she above hath nights. We, our sweet cling, our sweet cling song pierces the cover, and thin keen notes of music flit and hover like spirit birds upon the lyre of this our lover. We, children of the mountains, lying low on earth's own bosom, deep embowered flow in wide soft waves of land upon us sweep the mightiest rivers in our hollows lie great lakes our voices hardly rise but die in the cold streams of air shallow and deep leagues by the thousand dwells a minute long all we are children of the mighty throng that cluster where the mountains fail and sleep in such cool peace that even thy lyre awakes hardly a soul that tenderer music makes yet we arise and listen for our own sweet sakes then answers the living creatures of the earth The heavy hand is held, and the whips leave weary blows. The mysteries of eld are cancelled and expelled, and the miserable throes all we are shapen fair in many forms of grace. But change is everywhere, and time is all our share and all the ways of space. One lives an hour of day, one even man's life exceeds one loves to chase and slay one loves to sing and play each soul to his own deeds a share of joy is ours a double share of grief to sum the many hours in many hopes and powers all powers except the chief emotion fills our souls and love delights us well, and joy of sense full rolls, but leads us and controls life's central citadel. Whence we were drawn, who knows, of law or gods or chance, but as life's river flows, what sea shall clasp and close beyond blind circumstance? Such little power we own, a vague experience, and indistinct to enthrone the life's mere needs alone, nor answer why and whence, nor wandering in the night, our minds may apprehend, reflecting in pure light of soul, what sound or sight may lead us to some end. We hear the dim sound roll from the distant mountains drawn, we follow no soul guesses that silver goal the sunset or the dawn the lyre entices fast our willing feet and wings we wonder from the past what spell is overcast from the off from off the sonnet strings a while we deem our mates are calling through the wood a while the tune creates these unfamiliar states of thinking solitude a while we gather clear a note of promise swell, a song of fear and fate, assuring us who hear of other shapes to dwell, a promise vast and grand, as is the spangled sky. We dimly understand. We join the following band of dancing greenery. We see all nature bend to high Olympus's hill. Our tunes we choose and send, we follow to the end, O Orpheus, all thy will, our little love and hate, our hunger 
and our fear pass to a solemn state, pregnant with hope and fate. O Orpheus, we are here. So that was the Earth Spirits from Crowley's Orpheus. Uh, to those who are just tuning in, uh, happy solstice. We are in the middle of a hour of live streaming our Earth Altar. And uh, I'm going to leave us in silence for a little bit. The ritual, again, will begin at 8 p.m. Uh, I've got at least one more reading we'll see if i can dig a few more up but uh at, at least one more uh so stay tuned for that
Okay, now I've got a reading from Lieber LXV or Lieber 65. This will be chapter one, which is associated with the element of Earth. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the uh, chapters of Lieber 65 are each associated with one of the elements. And uh, Lieber 7, then, is uh, associated, each one of the chapters of Lieber, Lieber 7 is associated with one of the planets. So we'll be reading one of those later. But for now, here's chapter 1 from Lieber 65. <clears throat> I am the heart, and the snake is entwined about the invisible core of the mind. Rise, O oh my snake. It is now the hour of the hooded and holy ineffable flower. Rise, O oh my snake, into brilliance of bloom on the corpse of Osiris afloat in the tomb. O oh heart of my mother, my sister, mine own, thou art given to Nile, to the terror typhoon. Ah, me! But the glory of the ravening storm and swaths thee and wraps thee in frenzy of form. Be still, O oh my soul, that the spell may dissolve. As the wands are upraised and the aeons revolve, behold, in my beauty, how joyous thou art. O oh snake that caresses the crown of mine heart, behold, we are one. And the tempest of years goes down to the dusk, and the beetle appears. O oh, beetle, the drone of thy dolorous note, be ever the trance of this tremulous throat. I await the awakening, the summons on high, from the Lord Adonai, from the Lord Adonai. Adonai spake unto V V V V V, saying, There must ever be division in the word. For the colors are many, but the light is one. Therefore thou writest that which is of mother of emerald, and of lapis lazuli, and of turquoise, and of alexandrite. Another writeth the words of topaz, and of deep amethyst, and of, saf and of gray sapphire, and of deep sapphire, with a tinge as of blood. Therefore do ye fret yourselves because of this. Be not contented with the image. I, who am the image of an image, say this. Debate not of the image, saying, Beyond, beyond. One mounteth unto the crown by the moon, and by the sun, and by the arrow, and by the foundation, and by the dark home of the stars from the black earth. Not otherwise may ye reach unto the smooth point. Nor is it fitting for the cobbler to prate of the royal matter. O cobbler, mend me this shoe that I may walk. O king, if I be thy son, let us speak of the embassy to the king thy brother. Then there was silence. Speech had done with us a while. There is a light so strenuous that it is not perceived as light. Wolf's pain is not so sharp as steel, yet it pierceth the body more subtly, even as evil kisses corrupt the blood, so do my words devour the spirit of man. I breathe, and there is infinite dis-ease in the spirit, as an acid eats into steel, as a cancer that utterly corrupts the body. So am I unto the spirit of man. I shall not rest until I have dissolved it all. 
so also the light that is absorbed. One absorbs little, and is called white and glistening. One absorbs all, and is called black. Therefore, O oh my darling, art thou black. O oh my beautiful, I have likened thee to a jet Nubian slave, a boy of melancholy eyes. O oh, the filthy one, the dog, they cry against thee, because thou art my beloved. Happy are they that praise thee, for they see thee with mine eyes. Not aloud shall they praise thee, but in the night watch one shall steal close and grip thee with the secret grip. And another shall privily cast a crown of violets over thee. A third shall greatly dare, and press mad lips to thine. Yea, the night shall cover all, the night shall cover all. Thou wast long seeking me, Thou didst run forward so fast that I was unable to come up with thee. O oh, thou darling fool, what bitterness thou didst crown thy days withal. Now I am with thee. I will never leave thy being. For I am the soft, sinuous one, entwined about thee, heart of gold. My head is jeweled with twelve stars. My body is white as milk of the stars. It is bright with the blue of the abyss of stars invisible. I have found that which could not be found. I have found a vessel of quick silver. Thou shalt instruct thy servant in his ways. Thou shalt speak often with him. The scribe looketh upwards and crieth, Amen! Thou hast spoken it, Lord God. Further, Adonai spake unto VVVVV, and said, Let us take our delight in the multitude of men. Let us shape ourselves a boat of mother of pearl from them, that we may ride upon the river of Amrit. Thou seest yon pedal of Amaranth, blown by the wind from the low sweet brows of Hathur. The magister saw it and rejoiced in the beauty of it. Listen! From a certain world came an infinite wail. That falling petal seemed to the little ones a wave to engulf their continent. So they will reproach thy servant, saying, who hath set thee to save us? He will be sore distressed. All they understood, not that thou and I were fashioning a boat of mother of pearl. We will sail down the river of Amrit, even to the yew groves of Yama, where we may rejoice exceedingly. The joy of men shall be our silver gleam, their woe, our blue gleam, all in the mother of pearl. The scribe was wroth thereat. He spake, O Adonai and my master, I have borne the inkhorn and the pen without pay, in order that I may search this river of Amrit and sail as one of ye. This I demand for my fee, that I partake of the echo of your kisses. And immediately it was granted unto him. Nay, but not therewith was he content. By an infinite abasement unto shame did he strive. Then a voice. Thou strivest ever. Even in thy yielding thou strivest to yield, and lo, thou yieldest not. Go thou unto the outermost places, and subdue all things. Subdue thy fear and thy disgust, then yield. There was a maiden that strayed among the corn, and sighed, then grew a new birth, a narcissus, and therein she forgot her sighing and her loneliness.
Even instantly rode Hades heavily upon her and ravished her away. Then the scribe knew the Narcissus in his heart. But because it came not to his lips, therefore he was shamed and spake no more. Adonai spake yet again with VVVVV and said, The earth is ripe for vintage. Let us eat of her grapes and be drunken thereon. And VVVVV answered and said, O my lord, my dove, my excellent one, how shall this word seem unto the children of men? And he answered him, Not as thou canst see. It is certain that every letter of this cipher hath some value, but who shall determine the value? For it varieth ever according to the subtlety of him that made it. And he answered him, Have I not the key thereof? I am clothed with the body of flesh. I am one with the eternal and omnipotent God. Then said Adonai, Thou hast the head of the hawk, and thy phallus is the phallus of Asar. Thou knowest the white, and thou knowest the black, and thou knowest that these are one. But why seekest thou the knowledge of their equivalents? And he said, That my work may be right. And Adonai said, The strong brown reaper swept his scythe, swithe, and rejoiced. The wise man counted his muscles, and pondered, and understood not, and was sad. Reap thou, and rejoice. Then was the adept glad, and lifted his arm. Lo, an earthquake, and plague, and terror on the earth, a casting down of them that sate in high places, a famine upon the multitude, and the grape fell ripe and rich into his mouth. Stained is the purple of thy mouth, O brilliant one, with the white glory of the lips of Adonai. The foam of the grape is like the storm upon the sea, and the ships tremble and shudder, and the shipmaster is afraid. That is thy drunkenness, O holy one, and the winds whirl away the soul of the scribe into the happy heaven. O Lord God, let the haven be cast down by the fury of the storm. Let the foam of the grape tincture my soul with thy light. Bacchus grew old, and was Salinas. Pan was ever Pan, forever and evermore, throughout the aeons. Intoxicate the inmost, O my lover, not the outermost. So was it ever the same. I have aimed at the peeled wand of my god, and I have hit, yea, I have hit.
O Physis, resourceful mother of all, industrious and rich divinity, oldest of all, queen, all taming and indomitable, O lustrous ruler, ever honored mistress of all, highest goddess, imperishable, first-born, fabled glorifier of men, nocturnal, radiant with constellations, light-bringing, irrepressible, you move swiftly, your steps are noiseless. O pure marshal of the gods, O end that has no end. All partake of you. You alone partake of no one. Self-fathered, hence fatherless. Virtue itself, joyous, great. You are accessible, O nurse of flowers. You lovingly mingle and twine. You lead and rule. You bring life and nourishment to all. Self-sufficient, many-named persuasion of the graces, Dyke herself, queen of heaven, queen of the earth and of the sea, bitter to the vulgar, sweet to those who obey you, wise in all, giver of all, Nurturing queen of all. Abundant nourishment is yours as you dissolve whatever it ripens. Father and mother of all. Nurturer and nurse. Giver a swift birth. O oh, blessed one. Giver of wealth of seeds and of the fever of seasons. A rich and mighty divinity. You give shape and form to all things. Eternal, setting all in motion, skilled and discreet. You are ever turning the swift stream into an unceasing eddy, flowing in all things, circular and ever-changing form, fair-throned and precious. You alone accomplish your designs. Mighty mistress of booming thunder, you rule over those who hold the scepter. O oh, loud roaring divinity, fearless, all taming, destined fate, fire breathing. You are life everlasting. You are immortal providence. You are all things to all, because you alone do. You are the all. You alone do. You bring peace and health. You bring growth to all. Welcome everyone to Horizon Lodge's celebrate, celebration of the winter solstice. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This is the end of a series of workings um, that we started back in March uh, at the spring equinox. Uh, the, they were dedicated to the planets and to the elements. So tonight we will be having the last of these, the invocation of the universe, Tarot Trump, uh, the path of Tav, which in of itself contains the spirit of Saturn and the spirit of Earth. But more about that in a little bit. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are in the midst of a pandemic, and so we cannot meet at our temple space. So we're doing these online. Uh, we just finished an hour of altar streaming and um, a couple of readings. Uh, I read from the Earth passages of Crowley's Orpheus and also the Earth chapter of Liber 65. So uh, if you have a minute in the future, uh, go back and check those out. They will be online. So uh, I'll start off uh, by saying um, we have 
been engaged in a winter fundraising uh, drive. Normally we would do an end of the year uh, event where we'd have a silent auction and uh, music and all sorts of things. Uh, but, you know, seeing as how we can't do that and we still have uh, certain expenses to pay, uh, we we have our temple space in Lower Magnolia in Seattle, Washington, um, and we still pay rent there. Um, so we uh, decided to do an online fundraiser this year, and uh, we got uh, amazing responses. At first, we only called out for $2,000 to just sort of get us into the black for this year, and um, we raised that to a $4,000 um, goal, of which we have raised three thousand six hundred and eleven dollars uh and so uh if you have uh, if you're thinking about it there's a donation link uh, under in the description of this video uh we'd really love to get to four thousand dollars uh if you've got some extra cash to spare um, so the people that have um donated thus far uh, agreed to let me read their names to thank them uh on the air and uh, so these people are, uh, thank you very much to David Mackey, Kellen Barber, Howard Binner, Mark Dalton, Melissa and John, Keith Jones, Kristen Williams, James Lucino, Elizabeth Bain, Deborah Siegel, Dana Alvara, Dan and Vanessa Gomez. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it really means a lot, uh, your donations. Um, it's been a tough year, and it, it means a lot to us to be in the black for this year, to, um, to know that we've still got support from everybody. So thank you so much, and um, please donate if you can. So uh, with that said, uh, we look forward to the vaccination uh, or the vaccine being distributed across the, the United States uh, in the next quarter or two. And uh, we look forward to meeting again at the temple space. So please come and join us for these sort of rituals. Uh, we also do masses and classes. Um, so please join us when that happens. And stay tuned for when, when we can actually do that. So for the ritual... Uh, the, the schedule or the, the agenda of the ritual is that we, I have a, a series of pre-recorded readings. Uh, thus far, all the readings have been live, um, but I, I do have some pre-recorded uh, readings from various um, members of Horizon um, and of Ordo Templi Orientis. Uh, the reading you heard before was the Orphic Hymn to Physis the uh, goddess that seems to uh, that encapsulates the, the the entirety of the universe card a bit uh, research her it's a fascinating topic uh, when we start the ritual uh, just after this I'll be reading um, a series of passages related to the universe card uh, both from the book of Thoth and various Thelemic texts then we will have Sister Melissa reading the Orphic Hymn to Earth. Uh, Brother James reading the Orphic Hymn to Kronos and also the prayer uh, to the Gnomes from Levi. And then I will be reading Liber 7, Chapter 2, which is associated with Saturn. Then we will get into the ritual, the invocation proper, which will consist of drumming and chanting. The spirit name tonight is a very long one. For those of you who are familiar with this, uh, some of the spirit names from Liber 2.31. So this is a spirit from Liber 2.31. Um, you'll see the sigil on the altar. And so stare at that and chant uh, this spirit name along with us. And um, as these are spirits of the paths, they begin or emphasize the letter of the path 
on which they are found. This one, uh, being Saturn, is very difficult and uncomfortable to pronounce. I, I've in, I found in practice, uh, but you eventually grow to like it, which is sort of a theme with Saturn. Uh, so how I would pronounce this, uh, there's a couple of uh, non-Latin letters in here, specifically a um, Arabic ayin, which makes a, we're going to make an O sound. And uh, at the very end, there's a Coptic um, so, which makes a st sound, like an st is what we're going with. Uh, so the, the 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 name of the spirit in full is Thoth, Thethothuth, Theest, and so best just to think of it in four sections. There's Thoth. Uh, I like to envision Thoth at the beginning of the universe, throwing his energy, or throwing the energy uh, into creation. Th the th sound uh, you'll hear a rattle at that at this point um just make a th sound um thethothuth is the third section just kind of envision that as one and then feast is um sort of a return to to the beginning a return to the thoth the return back up to kether is one way to think about it the 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 coptic so that we have at the end uh, is generally thought as the energy of Kether. So you can think of that as a return. We will be doing, so there'll be 10 minutes of chanting. Uh, go along with that. We'll have a, roughly the same amount of time of silence afterwards for scrying. So for scrying, uh, what I recommend is, uh, th there's lots of ways to do this. Uh, we have a video uh, class that I'll link to at this point in the video in the future. Uh, on different ways to do it, but what I recommend for beginners is to just close your eyes and sort of partake of the energy that you've drummed up with all this fervent chanting uh, and you're staring at the sigil. And you'll, it could be anything from seeing something, like a full on vision, that's pretty rare, uh, to hearing something, uh, also sometimes rare. And then more commonly, it's going to be more of um, just things that occur to you. And so just note those down. Uh, just l let yourself be free to experience what's going on in your head. Uh, and um, write it down and contemplate it. So there'll be three sessions of that. Uh, a 10 minute, uh, a three minute, and a two minute. Uh, just the two three and the two minute afterwards to sort of charge you up a little bit and then um, we'll end the session so uh, let us get into the ritual one thing I, I will note uh, that is slightly different than previous um, previous tarot cards are the colors of this particular tarot card uh, combine both the colors of Saturn and also of Earth so Saturn and you, we're seeing those colors in the background of this particular animation. Uh, the colors of Saturn are indigo and black and um, uh, sort of dark indigo. And you see that sort of in this giant eye shape that, that is in the tarot card. And then the colors of Earth are um, green um, and also the, the sort of the earthy colors of brown and amber and um, sort of those colors. So the, just a note that we, we've got all these different colors going on and see if you can see them pop out with the, um, with the colored background. It's a, one of my favorite contemplations that I'm glad I get to share. So without further ado, let us start the ritual. See here, Trump 21, called the universe, or the great one of the night of time. In the vital triads, it alone stands by itself, as the pentacle of the whole, or the system. It is from this comprehension of totality that it gets assigned the title Administrative Intelligence from the Sefer Yetzirah. 
The first and most obvious characteristic of this card is that it comes to at the end of all, and is therefore the complement of the fool. It is attributed to the letter Tau. The two cards together, accordingly, spell the word At, which means essence. Thus, all reality is comprised in the series of which these two cards are the beginning and the end. This beginning was nothing. The end must therefore also be nothing, but nothing in its complete expansion. Therefore unto Hadith and unto Nuit be the glory in the end and the beginning, yea, in the end and the beginning. The letter Tau means the sign of the cross, that is, of extension, and this extension is symbolized as fourfold because of the convenience of constructing the revolving symbol of Tetragrammaton. No continuous process can be conveniently symbolized, but the number four lends itself not only to this rigid extension, the hard facts of nature, but also to the transcendence of space and time by a continuously self-compensating change. From the Secret Instructions of the Master Treat time and all conditions of events as servants of thy will, appointed to present the universe to thee in the form of thy plan, and blessing and worship to the prophet of the lovely star. The extension of one's self in contemplation of the universe as a whole is cultivated through the practice of the formulation of the body of light found in Liber O. The letter Tau is attributed to Saturn, the outermost and slowest of the seven sacred planets. Because of these dull, heavy qualities, the element of Earth was thrust upon the symbol. The original three elements, fire, air, water, sufficed for primitive thought. Earth and spirit represent a later accretion. Neither is to be found in the original twenty-two paths of the Sefer Yetzirah. Saturn and Earth have certain qualities in common. Heaviness, coldness, dryness, immobility, dullness, and the like. Yet Saturn appears in Binah in respect of its blackness, in the Queen scale, which is the scale of observed nature. But always, as soon as the end of, the of a process is reached, it returns automatically to the beginning. It becomes, then, reasonable to argue from analogy that since the end must beget the beginning, the symbolism will follow hence. Blackness is also attributed to the sun, according to a certain long-hidden tradition. One of the shocks for the candidates in the mysteries was the revelation, Osiris is a black god. We, therefore who are without the chains of ignorance, look closely into the heart of the seeker, and lead him by the path which is best suited to his nature unto the ultimate end of all things, the supreme realization, the life which abideth in light, yea, the life which abideth in light. Saturn, therefore, is masculine. He is the old god, the god of fertility, the sun in the south, but equally the great sea, the great mother, and the letter Tau upon the tree of life appears as an emanation from the moon of Yasad, the foundation of the tree, and represents the reproductive process of the equilibrium between change and stability, or rather their identification. The influence of the path descends upon the earth, Malkuth, the daughter, here again appears the doctrine of setting the daughter upon the throne of the mother. One is the Magus, twain his forces. These are the seven spirits of unrighteousness, seven vultures of evil. Thus is the art and craft of the Magus but glamour. How shall he destroy himself? Yet the Magus hath power upon the mother, both directly and through love. 
and the magus is love, and bindeth together that and this in his conjuration. In the card itself there is consequently a glyph of the completion of the great work in its highest sense, exactly as the Atu of the Fool symbolizes its beginning. The Fool is the negative, issuing into manifestation. The universe is that manifestation, its purpose accomplished, ready to return. The twenty-two cards that lie between these two exhibit the great work, and its agents in various stages. The image of the universe in this sense is accordingly that of a maiden, the final letter of Tetragrammaton. In the present card, she is represented as a dancing figure. In her hands, she manipulates the radiant spiral force, the active and the passive, each possessing its dual polarity. Her dancing partner is shown as Haru Raha of Atu 19. The sun, strength and sight, light, these are for the servants of the star and the snake. This final form of the image of the magical formula of God combines and transforms so many symbols that description is difficult and would be nugatory. The proper method of study of this card, indeed of all, but of this especially, is long-continued meditation. The universe, so states the theme, is the celebration of the great work accomplished. From the heart of the master, then Last of all, the soul of music takes the shape of a pure maiden's voice, and she sings. The perfection of the universe is the realization of the ideal of thy passion. In the corners of the card are the four cherubim showing the established universe, and about her is an ellipse composed of seventy-two circles for the quaternaries in the zodiac, the Shem Ham Foresh. In the center of the lower part of the card is represented the skeleton plan of the building of the House of Matter. It shows the 92 known chemical elements, at the time of this writing, arranged according to their rank in the hierarchy. In the center, a wheel of light initiates the form of the Tree of Life. But this tree is not visible except to those who are wholly pure of heart. All these symbols swim and dance in a complex but continuous ambience of loops and whirls. The general color of the traditional card is subscuse. It represents the confusion and darkness of the material world. But the new aeon has brought fullness of light. In the minutum mundum, earth is no longer black, or of mixed colors, but is pure, bright green. Similarly, the indigo of Saturn is derived from the blue velvet of the midnight sky, and the maiden of the dance represents the issue from this, yet through this to the eternal. This card is today as bright and glowing as any in the pack. Again from the heart of the master. Now, after all the words have fallen to silence, all is, as it were, a passion of great peace, and in the stillness I lift up my soul like an offering, and cry in mine heart, Let me dwell at the feet of the Master. But the silence swallows up those vain words, and they are smitten through with the fire of his blood that transforms them to these. At his feet is only the earth, and that he breaks up into flowers. But all things that live are assumed to the heart of the Master. With that, I cease to be myself at all. I am absorbed into his adorable essence, and my life is equally shed throughout the endless aeons of creation. Aye, there is nothing separate any more. Wherefore the vision faileth, the seer being one with the seen. When these, when these shall have destroyed the universe, then mayest thou enter the palace of the queen, my daughter. And in the heart of the Sphinx danced the Lord Adonai, in his garlands of roses and pearls, 
making glad the concourse of things. Yea, making glad the concourse of things. Divine Earth, Mother of men and of the blessed gods, you nourish all, you give all, you bring all to fruition, you destroy all. When the season is fair, you teem with fruit and growing blossoms, O oh, multi-formed maiden, seat of the immortal cosmos. In the pains of labor, you bring forth all fruit, eternal, revered, deep-bosomed and blessed. Your joy is the sweet breath of grass. O oh, goddess, bedecked with flowers, yours is the joy of the rain. The intricate realm of the stars revolves in endless and awesome flow. O oh, blessed goddess, may you multiply the delicious fruits, and may you and the beautiful seasons grant me kindly favor. Invisible King, who having taken the earth for support, and who dug the depths to fill them with your omnipotence. Thou whose name shakes the vaults of the earth, thou who makes the seven metals flow in the veins of stone, monarch of the seven lights, rewarder of subterranean workers, Bring us to the desirable air and the kingdom of brightness. We keep watch and work without rest. We search and we hope by the twelve stones of the holy city, by the buried talismans, by the pole of magnet which runs through the center of the earth. Lord, 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 have pity on those who suffer. Enlarge our hearts, free and raise our minds. Exalt us. O oh, stability and movement, O oh, day enveloped by night, O oh, darkness veiled with light, O oh, master who never keeps to himself the wages of your workers, O oh, silvery whiteness, O oh, golden splendor, O oh, crown of living and melodious diamonds. Thou who wears the heavens on your finger like a ring of sapphire. Thou who hides under the earth in the kingdom of gems, the marvelous seed of the stars. Live, reign, and be the eternal dispenser of the riches of which you have made us the guardians. Amen. Everlasting Father of blessed gods and men, resourceful, pure, and mighty, O oh, powerful Titan, you consume all things and replenish them too. Unbreakable is the hold you have on the boundless cosmos. O oh, Kronos, begetter of time, Kronos of the shifting stories, child of earth, child of starry sky, in you there is birth and decline. O oh, revered and prudent Lord of Rhea, you are the progenitor. You dwell in every part of the world. I am a suppliant. Hear my voice, so wily and brave one. And to a good life, bring a blameless end. O oh my God, use thou me again. Always, forever, forever. That which came fire from thee cometh water from me. 
Let therefore thy spirit lay hold on me, so that my right hand loose the lightning. Traveling through space, I saw the onrush of two galaxies, budding each other and goring like bulls upon earth. I was afraid. Thus they ceased fight and turned upon me, and I was sorely crushed and torn. I had rather have been trampled by the world elephant. O oh my God, thou art my little pet tortoise, yet thou sustainest the world elephant. I creep under thy carapace, like a lover into the bed of his beautiful I creep in and sit in thine heart, as cubby and cozy as may be. Thou shelterest me, that I hear not the trumpeting of that world elephant. Thou art not worth an obel in the agora, yet thou art not to be bought at the ransom of the whole universe. Thou art like a beautiful Nubian slave, leaning her naked purple against the green pillars of marble that are above the bath. Wine jets from her black nipples. I drink wine a while, agone in the house of Pertinax. The cup-boy favored me, and gave me of the right sweet chain. There was a Doric boy, skilled in feats of strength, an athlete. The full moon fled away angrily down the rack. Ah, but we laughed. I was a pernicious drunk, oh my God. Yet Pertinax brought me to the bridal. I had a crown of thorns for all my dower. Thou art like a goat's horn from Astor, O oh, thou god of mine, gnarled and crooked and devilish strong, colder than all the ice of all the glaciers of the naked mountain was the wine it poured for me. A wild country and a waning moon, clouds scudding over the sky, a circuit of pines and of tall yews beyond, thou in the midst. O oh, all ye toads and cats, rejoice! Ye slimy things, come hither! Dance, dance to the Lord our God! He is he! He is he! He is he! Why should I go on? Why? Why comes the sudden cackle of a million imps of hell, and the laughter runs, but sickens not the universe, but shakes not the stars? God, how I love thee. I am walking in an asylum. All the men and women about me are insane. O oh, madness, madness! Madness, desirable art thou. But I love thee, O oh God. These men and women rave and howl. They froth out folly. I begin to be afraid. I have no check. I am alone, alone, alone. Think, O oh God. How I am happy in thy love. O oh, marble pan, O oh, false leering face, I love thy dark kisses, bloody and stinking. O oh, marble pan, thy kisses are like sunlight on the blue Aegean. Their blood is the blood of the sunset over Athens. Their stink is like a garden of roses of Macedonia. I dreamt of sunset, and roses, and vines. Thou wast there, O oh my God. Thou didst habit thyself as an Athenian courtesan, and I loved thee. 
thou art no dream, O oh, thou too beautiful alike for sleep and waking. I disperse the insane folk of the earth. I walk alone with my little puppets in the garden. I am gargantuan great. Yon galaxy is but the smoke ring of mine incense. Burn thou strange herbs, O oh God. Brew me a magic liquor, boys, with your glances. The very soul is drunken. Thou art drunken, O oh my God, upon my kisses. The universe reels. Thou hast looked upon it twice, and all is done. Come, O oh come, my God, and let us embrace. Lazily, hungrily, ardently, patiently, so will I work. There shall be an end. O oh God, O oh God, I am a fool to love thee. Thou art cruel, thou wist holdest thyself. Come to me now, I love thee, I love thee. Oh, my darling, my darling, kiss me, kiss me, ah, but again. Sleep, take me, death, take me. This life is too full, it pains, it slays, it suffices. Let me go back into the world, yea, back into the world. Oh, 
truth who feast thought feast thought 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 who
feast thoth thethothuth 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 feast So if you need more scrying time, please pause the video now. To everyone else, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, as always, if you want to share um, your experience, uh, please feel free to do so in the comments uh, of this video.
happy solstice. Also, just as a side note, we didn't intend for the this candle to turn into a hell broth, so we're laughing pretty hard over here. It was supposed to just be a uh, a blue flame candle, but it uh, it decided that it wanted to be a hell broth in celebration of Saturn, so it seems to be doing okay. <laughs> Impromptu hell broth. Um, yeah, so just reading through the chat here, uh, thanks Melissa, Seth, uh, Sheen or Sean, uh, Denny, Sarah, Mary, and Jim. Yeah, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, and, you know, like and subscribe. <laughs> If, if you want to see more content like this and also uh, donate to help us reach our end of the year donation goal and uh, have a happy solstice.